least myself and many of our friends, we understood that the, the way to make a world change is to make a lift, uh, little um, alternatives, uh, which can be freely, uh, completely autonomous of, of the system. No? So the main thing for me is uh, to create, uh, well, to imagine first, then create uh, systems that allow us uh, not to meet the capitalist or state structures. Uh, and then we don't even have to go against them or throw stones. Uh, it's the same way that Linux has beaten or is beating Microsoft, no? a free software. It's not, they are not throwing stones to Microsoft, they are not boycotting Microsoft, they are just doing alternative ways so we cannot, we are not forced to use only Apple or Microsoft. We can use free software so without confrontation. And then Microsoft and Apple, they don't know what to do with that. They cannot buy it, they cannot send a bomb to that, they cannot repress it with police because it's a different uh, strategy. No? They, don't, they don't understand, they don't talk this language. So the same thing I believe we have to do with all the different fields, no? it's not confronting, it's just creating, like for instance, the schools or this currency system that I, that I mentioned, or the food distribution system, or the software, or the free hardware. Uh, it's creating things that make us, not from night to day, but gradually, and in that transition way, without feeling guilty because we are still in capitalism and stuff like that, just understanding that we are now slaves of this capitalism, that we can go uh, and be free more and more. So gradually we create the structures that allow us not to need a public school because we have our own self managed school. We don't need uh, the supermarkets or big distribution food schemes, not even ecological shops because we have our own self. So uh, this is one thing, you know, creating things that in a gradual and transition way allow us to be more free from that. In the economy, this is translated in that we have different circles of economy, concentric circles, that go uh, from the utopy, the, the most inner circle, which is the collectivized economy. Then we have this second layer of economy, which is the barter economy. It can be direct barter, if you're lucky, or it can be uh, multi-reciprocal with the currencies, local currencies. Then we have this new layer, which is the peer-to-peer -peer currencies, like bitcoins or fairy coins, that Ale will explain. And then we have uh, the last layer, which is euro, or official currency, bless you. Uh, official currency, uh, but in uh, fair trade schemes and cooperativism, but, uh, but also we have this layer of the economy. In that, in that way, we, we don't elude uh, capitalism or say, no, no, this, we don't want to see it. No, no, we see it, we know that we need, we know, we know that we need some euros in our economies, in our projects, so we have it, but we have it in the periphery of our system. We are not fully dependent on selling stuff to earn euros, like many cooperatives or even squat houses they have, they have to sell a lot of beer in concert or whatever, or a lot of entries in a concert in order to have the money. Uh, in our case, it's not that. We, don't, we need some euros, but we are not fully dependent. Or a normal cooperative, like for instance, Mondragon in the Basque country, you know, very famous. But what happens? That, that they have changed the inner democracy of this cooperative, but outside they play in an ocean which is uh, capitalism. No? So with the CIC, what we have worked is in this ocean, is in this surrounding, uh, in this uh, environment, no? economical environment, which is cooperative. No? So, so well, so then, for instance, a new eco village like the one I'm beginning, or Calafo, for instance, they have this internal economy uh, where there's no reciprocity and no register of the economy because there is a lot of uh, confidence, a lot of uh, confianza, of trust, sorry. Uh, then there's a second, so in this, and this, these circles can grow or not depending on the organization in every moment of every region and every project. It is not a static thing. Uh, so they can have in Calafo, for instance, a big, uh, uh, or in Eco Village, or in Cristiania, maybe they have a, a big uh, communal economy because they are very, very well organized, etc. Then you can have a big uh, barter economy where there is a register, there is a reciprocity, but there is a much more cooperative economical pattern. And then the peer-to-peer -peer currencies 
Ali will talk about that. And then uh, euros, where there's a lot of, the, there is a full reciprocity, full register, and there's no um, no trust. No? I cannot know who I'm selling something that I did in the Ecovillage. I can send it to Denmark, for instance, and I don't have to know the person, so I can charge in euros. No? So this is what also has helped us to understand the broader picture. It's more than just economy. It's understanding how we can find ways, ways out of, of capitalism and of the near, uh, the current uh, feudal system, which I believe that it is capitalism at the end. So, so well, uh, to end up, yeah, I would, I would finish here, not to, not to worry, not to annoy you too much. But so this is what we can talk about it, and this is what we have been doing, and I hope that somehow here in Denmark and in other places, people can just take what they believe is interesting of that and create new developments. And I believe that this is one of the few ways that I I see that we can get free of the current uh, neo-fascist uh, societies that we are seeing. Okay, so that would be. <laughs> Muchas gracias. In English, do you want? Um, in English, yeah, we'll uh, group three questions and um, then uh, have you answer them uh, as you want. Yeah. Okay. 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 So just uh, give us a minute and we'll give you the questions in a second. Okay. okay. All right. Questions and comments or interventions on the presentation so far? And we'll group them and send them through a non-free software <laughs> to Spain. Was this a... No? All right. Uh, I'd yep. like to ask yeah, just... Yeah, sure. uh, you mentioned uh, a song of stuff that they made. Maybe we should hear if you can hear us. Can you hear yeah, us? The, the best way would be for you to stand you up and do it yourself. Just uh, yeah. go there and <laughs> tell him the question. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. probably the easiest way. <laughs> yeah. And feel free to line up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope everybody here can hear me. But uh, you talked a bit about it. it's cooperative, and you talked a little bit about the stuff that you produce. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell more about uh, like what, how many types of things you produce, and what has been successful. Has some of them had difficulties? Uh, and how have your organization been around the production of different things? Because uh, in the, for instance, in the agriculture, maybe if you have a plot of land, it might be easier to establish a production. But if you are producing something more uh, complicated, you might need an investment to start out a production for machinery and stuff like this. Uh, and how have you have organized this? Uh, so if you could elaborate a little bit. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I answer now. For, for me, it's easier if I can ask, answer yeah. the question instead of waiting for three. Yeah. yeah, mainly, so what we have is mainly a network of uh, sovereignty. You know? So one of the, another of the big difference with, with all social movements, let's say, is that before, you know, like people had a hippie community in the mountain or something, or a squad house or whatever, and they had, but mainly uh, like a typical hippie community in the Oreco village, they had to do everything, you know, and be fully self-sustaining economically, with the food, with everything. This is not how we work, for instance, ourselves now. Uh, we have this, it's a, it's a sovereignty based in a network. You know? So, for instance, Calafo, many people, when I was living there, used to come and say, but where is your garden? We don't have a garden with potatoes and tomatoes. And we said, no, we don't have that. We, maybe we're not, we're not going to have it. And they were really surprised. And said, how can you be in a community like that and not have a self-manage? I said, because we're doing uh, free software here and free hardware. So, and then now myself, for instance, I'm in the Pyrenees, I won't do their free software or free hardware. I will do their potatoes or whatever I can do there. So what we do is, and this helps us also organizing and, and, and having our revenues, is, uh, well, and it's the good part of the theory of capitalism, no? which is that different regions, that they can have different specialities, that they specialize, not completely, and be only one product or something, but they 
to be more specialized in some fields, and then we share. And this is what I said before as well, an excuse to, to, to get in touch and to share things. Mm, so Colorful does a lot of free software, for instance, that other communities are using, or where Ale is in Barcelona, they have a, a place to stay in Barcelona. So different communities have different things, uh, depending, or I talked yesterday with a friend who was part of this project, now they're beginning one with his couple, and they will do a pistachio, I don't know the name in English, but, uh, well, a very specific thing of, uh, of gardening, you know, and they will, so, so yeah, mainly the big concept is that we don't need each project to be completely self-sufficient, but it's a, it's a network self-sufficient uh, schemes, let's say. You know? I don't know if I answer you, but something like that. <coughs> Uh, well, and about, you said also what came, went well and what went bad, very difficult to analyze. And also because some things go bad and after two years, uh, it's thanks to that that they go well. <laughs> but, but yeah, many things, uh, I mean, have been difficult. We have had lots of personal conflicts as well. I mean, not, not too much and too bad, but we have had personal conflicts. We have had projects that, I don't know, when you put together, because capitalism is already difficult you know, to have a good company working well, etc. But when you go to this cooperativism, you need this efficiency, but also the human issue, you know, which is very important. You cannot have orders or hierarchies that make it easier, let's say. You know? So you have to do it in a consensus. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very difficult. But also one important concept for us is that we learn by working. You know? uh, so, and without working, we don't learn it. So this is the big thing. So at the beginning, we have lots of uh, uh, no? lots of problems. Uh, but little by little, these problems are, are uh, not that hard, no? because we begin to learn. And the things that we learn, now we can realize that without doing that, we would have never learned that. We would have never learned that in a normal company, in a university, in a social movement uh, specific. We, we learn it by trying to do it. We went to live together, 30 families in a town and buying it. There were lots of discussions. But then we learn a lot of, of it. It was like a big university in Calafo, for instance. So, so, so these things we have the problems, but without this we don't learn and we cannot walk. Sorry, another question. Hi, I have another Hi. question. Uh, it's based on the same uh, question as before uh, about your experience with the positive and negative. Do you have uh, some sort of documents? Uh, which summarize maybe and yeah. uh, explains maybe the systems that you are using. For instance, when you when it comes to conflict, I know at mm -hmm. Black Packet we choose to use uh, the restorative circle as a means to uh, like non-violent uh, mm -hmm. conflict resolution, and we use consensus uh, decision taking uh, for our mm -hmm. meetings. Do you have uh, some sort of information yeah. zine or like a, yeah. and where is it if you have it? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have it. Uh, uh, there was a friend, uh, Gorka, no, Ale, who who did a, a big uh, resume as well, and it was in the CSC webpage, I think. Ali can talk about that maybe more. Uh, there was this some place where it is very uh, uh, resume many of the things that have been uh, we have been doing in the CSC. Normally, we I think that there is more like the structures, let's say, more than the personal issues. The resolution issue of conflicts, well, this is a big, big, yeah. big issue. No? Um, there are different approaches and theories. Uh, so what I can say, well, for me, I think that what I can uh, put into this debate is that one of the main things, in my, based in my experience, it's been 20 years trying to do this kind of thing and many projects like that, is that many conflicts arise when you don't have a clear common proposal. So uh, one of the big mistakes is to say, okay, let's make an eco-village and we will see what, how, how, how we do it, or let's make a project whatever and let's see how we do it once we're there and assembly will resolve everything or we'll do everything by consensus. It's fantastic, but sometimes it does not work. And mainly it's because sometimes we have a very different perspective. For instance, an eco-village where people never drink a beer or an eco-village where they can drink or an eco-village where education, it's free education, or it's authoritarian education. 
So it's very difficult to get consensus on that. And when you have never tried it, you think, no, no, we will talk it, and since we are friends now, we will solve it. But then it's not that easy, no? because if you have different approach, really, at that point, it's difficult to get in a consensus. Right? It's just that one wins the other. And then the other one leaves, or, or okay, stays there, but stays not really well. No? So for me, one of the main things is not to say, okay, let's make an eco-village, but instead of that, saying, okay, let's make an eco-village, which is, uh, I don't know, indigenous or Buddhist or whatever, sensibility, so that people that vibrate on that, in the main structures, they go there. And then we can discuss and have consensus on the details. But we cannot have a consensus, for instance, if if somebody thinks that a priest coming is a big, a very bad thing, another one likes it a lot. You know? So if these structural things are not consensus. So one of the things I believe that we learn is that instead of just doing these you know, communities, just saying, okay, we will see what, what happens, is creating different communities of different sensibilities. You know? So California now is a much more punk, let's say, thing. So people who are more, more like in the punk movement, they can go there. If they come to our new community, we will have a discussion, because I don't believe in PAN, to be honest. Uh, so we will have a discussion, uh, political discussion, maybe.